Hey everybody, another new day is here. I just got out of my doctor's appointment this morning. I had to get a couple of uh, birthmarks removed. Uh, <laughs> I have my dad's skin a little bit. We have a lot of birthmarks on our body and some of them on my back were starting to grow. So we got them checked out and he was able to just literally burn them off. Like it stank like burning in there. He froze it first, right? So I couldn't feel what he was doing, but I just smelt this smoke smell the whole time. It was weird. <laughs> He also had the reports back from uh, that uh, awkward donation that I gave. The second one was good. I don't have to go give a third one. Uh, everything is good. Uh, swimmers are strong and nothing wrong on my end. Britt is just waiting for some tests on her end, but we're pretty confident that everything is okay there too. We're just uh, trying to conceive and we just got to be patient and wait for wait for our time to come. So we'll, uh, we'll see. We're trying to, uh, if, if you're unfamiliar with this situation, if you're just tuning in, uh, my vlogs are usually about my life truck driving, but it's also about my life at home as well. And, uh, it's, it's about my life in general, all aspects of it. And one big part of my life now, since I married my wife is that we're trying to conceive, we want to have a baby and we've been having, uh, problems. Uh, there was one miscarriage already. And we're just really excited to be parents, I think, and have little, little kids running around. And uh, maybe we're just being a little bit impatient. But everything is good on my end, so pretty sure everything's good on her end as well. I guess we'll keep you informed once something actually does happen regarding that. But for now, now that I'm out of my doctor's appointment, I'm just waiting for my truck to be done in the shop. I got to... Uh, go pick that up, pay them. They fixed my bunk heater. Like I was telling you yesterday, I'm very excited about that. Cause now I don't have to idle my truck, uh, through January. It's so cold up here. You have to idle it through the night. Otherwise you'll freeze. Right. And I was idling it, uh, more than I was driving it. I get a report at the end of the month as to how much I, I idled it and what the percentage is to driving. And I think I was averaging between 55 and 60% idle time of the whole time that the engine was on and I was burning between seven and one seven hundred and one thousand dollars a month in fuel just idling doing nothing and the truck's not making money when it's not run, when it's not moving so that's up to a thousand dollars just wasted every month just gone that could be in my pocket right now paying bills going into savings so this bunk heater that I got now I'll explain it to you more a little later maybe when I actually use it and turn it on and try it what it does is it, it runs off diesel fuel, but not nearly as much. It runs off a drip compared to what the engine would run off of. And it just takes a little bit of diesel fuel out of the tank and it runs it through this little heater motor and it heats the inside of my cab so that I don't have to have my engine running, but it keeps the cab warm so I can still, you know, not freeze to death. So they fixed that for me, which is awesome. Uh, they replaced all my filters. They did a full service on the truck now, uh, since it was in there anyways. Uh, they fixed the oil leak. And they replaced my windshield because I had that big crack across my windshield. So my bill is going to be pretty expensive. I'm expecting over $2,000 for this bill. I'm hoping it's not going to be $3,000, but I'm thinking for sure. Cause the windshield was $550 with labor and everything included. Uh, the bunk heater would have been a, an hour or two of labor. I'm pretty sure. Uh, the service is going to be about $400 th between three and $400 probably. And then all the, the labor, for fixing the oil leak yet. So maybe it'll be under 2000, but I'm going to guesstimate around $2,000 for this that I got to pay today. And then I'm going to take my truck home. I'm going to load it all up with my stuff. And, uh, I'm here in my wife's vehicle. So I'm going to leave my vehicle or leave her vehicle at the shop, take the truck home, load it all up. Cause I took everything out of it. Cause I was going to get it detailed, but now I don't want to spend the money into that since I spent all this other money on fixing it. Load all my stuff back up in there, and then she's going to jump in the truck with me. We're going to bring her back to the shop where she can pick up this vehicle, bring it home, and then I'm going to go to work. I've got to pick up a load of lumber that's going down to Minnesota. That's going to get me down there, and then the next day i got to go pick up a load of glass that's taking me through to British Columbia. So I've been talking long enough here in the morning. I'm just at the gym right now waiting for my truck. So, Snap Fitness. I just pulled up to the shop here. This is Trucks Unlimited in Steinbeck. It's the Freightliner dealer. And uh, they were the 
they were the shop that was able to get my truck in immediately and not a week later. So big thanks to them. I'm going to go in right now and see what the damage is. See how much it costs to do everything. I just checked my truck is just on the other side of this trailer here right now. I'm going to park Britt's vehicle here. Like I said before, go home and then bring her back here so she can bring this home. I washed her car for her, so I'm not going to tell her. So when she comes to pick it up later, yeah, little brownie points for me. Today is our anniversary of the day we met, actually. Uh, the, the, the day I convinced her to go on a date with me. It's three years ago. Feels like a lot longer than that, but I'm filming this on March 7th, so you're watching this a few days later already. But that was our three-year anniversary. So happy anniversary, hon. Three years. We got married a year and a half later. So we've been married a year and a half now. So just at the beginning of our long journey, but... She sure brought a lot of happiness to my life and made my life a lot better. So glad I convinced you to see me that day. <laughs> I had to chase her a little bit. I never really told the story of how we met, I guess. I can do that another time, but uh, we met online and uh, talked for quite a while before I actually met her. It was a good day. So let's go in and get the truck right now and get ready to leave. Got to be in Minnesota for tomorrow morning if possible. Chevy, I'm going to miss you, buddy. I'm going to miss you. Okay, he likes his butt scratch, just like that. <laughs> so we're ready to go. We're all packed up. Britt's going to come with me to go get her vehicle at the shop where I left it. True story. Just working on a thumbnail. Ah, you're releasing a new vlog. Have you guys watched it yet? <laughs> What's it called? It's going to be called Trucker Turns Artist. Oh, <laughs> right on. So I have a vlog about artistry coming up too, but if you want to get a little bit of a sneak peek and get ahead of the game, Brit's vlog is going to be already live by the time you see this. So before you see my version of it, and hers is better. So go down below to the description of this video and all my other videos. There's a link to Brit's Beat. That's her YouTube channel. Go and check it out. Frank. Are you gonna miss me? Are you gonna miss me? Be honest. Nope. <laughs> well, at least you're honest. Gotta respect that. And Diesel, are you ready to go on the truck? We're going to Minnesota, man. Minnesota. And then we're going all the way to BC. You excited? <laughs> He's just whining. Good boy. Let's go, man. Oh, that was a toot. That was a that was a weasel toot. He gets nervous and he does that. <laughs> Farts when he's nervous. I was cutting cucumbers earlier, slicing them and giving them some. And he, he was watching me and all of a sudden there's a big and he just looks at me and starts wagging his tail. <laughs> he's a flatulent boy. Is it true? Are you a gassy boy? Alright, Chev, you gotta stay home with mom, okay? You keep her safe. Maybe next time he can go with you. I just want his belly belly incision to heal up a little more before he climbs the stairs to the truck. Yeah. Good boy. Need a little bit more recovery time. Alright, Weasel, you ready? You ready, man. Brett, you ready? Yeah, sorry, every time I look at that picture of us and your cousin, I laugh. <laughs> Here we are at the corner of the 59 Highway and the 311. This is where my dad's dad, my opa, my grandpa, this is where he died. In 1991, long before these traffic lights were put up. These traffic lights were only put up last year. But he was involved in a, an accident here. Someone didn't stop for the stop signs that were here then. And that was that. I don't even remember him, which is sad, right? It's my dad's dad. I was born in 88, so I was three years old. I got no memories of him. Back then they didn't have the safety features like they do in the cars of today, which saved my sister's life just a couple weeks ago.
in a similar accident actually it's actually very similar except that wasn't at an intersection that was because of the weather but it was it was about the same thing and the airbags saved her life and they didn't have that back then I think of that every time I go past that corner even though I, I don't remember him I still still think of that every time I go past there So we're about 10 minutes away from the yard where we're going to pick up our lumber load. We're going to quickly strap it down, unless if whoever dropped it there left it strapped. But that is highly unlikely. That does not happen very often, but it happens. Usually all the equipment stays with the truck, which is a little inconvenient, I realize. I, I know some other places, they leave all the equipment with the trailer. It makes more sense to me too, but I'm, I'm not the one making those decisions. That's the way we do it. So I'll probably have to put my straps on there and then we'll uh, pull it as far down south as we can. We'll get into the U.S. tonight. We'll get at least down to Fargo. See how we feel once we get there. Clara City is about six hours from here. Well, it was a bit of a chilly evening here. Yikes. Whew. But here we go. There's my load. Got a load of lumber. I got tarps at the back. It's gonna be for the glass load that I'm picking up tomorrow. We're pretty much at our max weights for the US. So let's go have some fun. Let's bring it on down there. This is St. Agath Flying J. I'm still in Manitoba here. I need a coffee. And I'm a little too low on fuel to wait to the US. So I'm gonna throw a little bit in here. And then, uh, try and fuel the majority of it in the states where it's a lot cheaper there we go I just rolled into Fargo North Dakota here and I'm, I'm gonna stop here for night I'm pretty tired it's around midnight right now so it'll already be pretty late in the day when I can get going tomorrow I was gonna stop at the rest area just into Minnesota on the other side of the river but I decided to see if I could find a parking spot here at the Stay Mart first. I'm feeling that there won't be any parking left here, but if I can get one, just because I was having oil problems, just in case it's not fixed and I have those problems again, then at least I'm at a truck stop and not at a rest area with no facilities other than bathrooms. So we're just going off to the right here. There's trucks parked all over here already, so I guarantee you there's no parking anywhere. Is this my driveway? No, it's not my driveway yet. The next one. There won't be any parking here. I'm pretty sure of it. It's usually a telltale sign. If you go to a truck stop and there's trucks parked all over in the driveway and all over the place, they're usually parked all over the place because there's nowhere else to park. But it's always a good idea to go and check anyway, just in case, you know. You never know. I've stayed here many times over the years. These stay marts are actually awesome truck stops. You go inside there, it you feel like a king. Like they treat truckers well at the stay marts. These are all full, all full. Oh come on, there's gotta be something for Trekker Josh. Well there's a spot there, but I'd have to blindside it in. That's the thing about these parking lots, eh? Every spot is a blindside back. I don't really feel like blindsiding myself in. I'm too tired for that. I mean, I'll do it if I have to, but... Pretty much all blocked up. Oh, we might have to make a spot. 